It's uh, He's looking for worshipers. Why? Because he loves people, and love always requires the best. And there's nothing better God could want for you than for you and me to be a worshiper. And the reason is because we always become like the one we worship. So out of love for us, he draws us into the place of worship. The second one is this one on evangelism, and I don't think it's a mistake that this revelation follows the one on worship because evangelism in its purest form should be an overflow of worship. Verse 35, do you not say there are still more four months, excuse me, do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes, look at the fields. They are already white for harvest. <clears throat> I actually was not going to share this one tonight, just going to end on the other, but I, I, I think it might be appropriate. Do you not say there are still four months comes the harvest? That's interesting, isn't it? Because he just got to teaching his disciples how to connect the reality of his world to nature. <laughs> And now he's saying, you guys say it takes four months to get a harvest. Where did he get that from? From nature. So what is he doing? He's trying to take them to what he told them he wanted, he wanted to give them in verse 12 of chapter 3. If I talk to you about earthly things, you don't make the connection. How can I talk to you about heavenly things? The things that have no earthly parallel. He's trying to do that right here. Right? You say it takes four months to, t to get a harvest. I say it doesn't. <laughs> so there. <laughs> he says, lift up your eyes, look up, and then look down. Lift up your eyes, look on the field. They're all white for harvest. Fascinating. Fascinating. Because he is claiming in this verse, and he tends to be right. <laughs> He, 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 at least I've noticed this. He, he, he is saying every person is harvestable now. Now here's the challenge. The greater the revelation, the greater the anointing you'll need to display the effect and benefit of that revelation. I have no idea what you're talking about. The greater the revelation, the greater your need will be for an anointing equal to the revelation to be able to put it on display. Here, here's a great example. Our, our, our beliefs are fairly commonplace and simple to understand. Humankind is simply materialized color operating on the 49th vibration. You would uh, make that conclusion walking down the street or going to the store. You guys still doing all right? Okay. Here's a, here's a good example. Paul unveils the gifts of the Spirit to the church at Corinth, chapter 12. He's giving them insights they've never had before. In chapter 14, he says, pursue earnestly spiritual gifts. The revelation on the gifts didn't impart the gifts. The revelation showed them what was available. Chapter 14, he said, now you'll need to go get it. So when the Lord reveals something, see, faith explores what revelation reveals. It's not good enough to stand back and observe at a distance what belongs to us. Faith must explore what's been open to us. And when new truth is shown to us, I don't mean addition to Scripture. I mean he shows us what's been there all, all the time. When he opens up Scripture to us, he's inviting us to pursue a realm of anointing so that, uh, that equals that truth, so that we can actually put the reality of that truth on display, which in this case is what? Everyone's harvestable now. You remember the man of the Gadarenes? That man had issues. <laughs> that, that guy's problems didn't happen to him because he had a bad weekend. Uh, he just didn't drink too much on Friday and end up in that condition. He's, 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 got, he's got a history of issues. He's got a lifetime subscription to issues. 
The guy is so demon possessed that his demons are possessed. <laughs> it's the greatest conversion in the New Testament. Old Testament, I think, is Nebuchadnezzar. So what does Jesus do? He plants right into the middle of his story of the gospel, of the great news, the most impossible case we could ever imagine. The guy who runs through town naked at night, eats their cats and dogs, lives in a great yard, graveyard, you know, weird stuff. And it's so funny because here Jesus makes it across the sea. They almost die at sea and the disciples are hugging planet Earth. I, I've come to the conclusion I'd stop sailing with Jesus because I noticed they, they seem to have pretty, I'm, I'm buying a horse. I'm just going to be on the other side. <laughs> So they get out, they finally make it to shore, and, and you know, the disciples are, are getting rid of lunch and laying there on the, <laughs> on the ground. You can see they lift up their head, and here it comes. The, the guy who's, who's dripping with critters. I mean, he's got, he's got, he gets a group discount wherever he goes. He's, 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 He's running right at Jesus. And you can just see Peter and John going, you take him high, I'll take him low. <laughs> We're going to cast out both the demons and the man here in a minute. And the guy comes. Now, remember, we, we don't know how many demons he has, but we know that uh, it was enough to fill 2,000 pigs and you know, creating doubled ham, send them into the water. And, 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 uh, yeah, that's bad. That's bad. It's it's always been a bad, bad one. But anyway. we know that it was enough. So let's just say two thousand for illustrations. Like, so the guy gets delivered. You know. So here's this guy. He falls at Jesus' feet while he is demonized, and the Bible says, and he began to worship Jesus. That's profound. 2,000 demons could not keep one guy from worshiping Jesus. That's amazing. That means to me the church has no excuse. So he falls at Jesus' feet. Jesus brings him into his one-step program. out of darkness, into his marvelous light. <laughs> now, if it takes you 12 or 20, I don't care. Let's just get people free. But the amount of steps it takes is usually correlates to the level of anointing you know how to live in. <laughs> so he sets, he sets the guy free. The guy's totally free. And the, perhaps the funniest verse in the Bible says, and the man was clothed and in his right mind, and the city was afraid. <laughs> That's awesome. As long as he's running around naked, you know, doing weird things, well, that's just George. That's just the way he is. His dad was the same way. His grandfather was like, that's just the way they are. It's just that family. But as soon as he gets free, it's got to be that weird cult in town. It's got to be that new church down the street, you know. Sometimes God's power has been missing so long from the church that when he shows up, people think it's the devil. It's a strange, strange thing. And I see a very strange vision right now where I see crowns within crowns within crowns within crowns within crowns within crowns. And as soon as you take the crown off and place it on the child, I see like a pyramid of crowns upon the child's head. And they take the largest one off and place it on another. And there's another one there. And I see this, this, um, I feel like there's this, it's like a mountain of provision of anointing. The more you give away, the more you will receive, says the Lord. So right now, I'm sensing, 
I was sensing really strongly. Uh, <laughs> it's going to sound a little odd, but too late. Uh, I want you just to t take in the spirit realm that crown that's on your head and just place it upon someone else they're gonna just get wrecked all over the room you just gonna, okay don't don't do it don't do it like it doesn't matter do it in the most impartation most impartation that you've ever believed for right now you're gonna impart to each other so you're gonna take it you're gonna put it on somebody else's head a watch and then say more Lord more Lord everybody place place that anointing that crown that gift upon someone else's head <laughs> keep praying every single one of you impartation legacy 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 increase your glory more lord try it again try it again try it again try it again more lord fire there's fire place it on their heads find somebody i think he's got it shake up baba fire place it on another one's head fire Shh. legacy legacy As the greatest thing you've ever seen in your life prophesy over them 10 times start to prophesy over it 10 times what i've seen let it be 10 times what i've seen let it be Ten times what I've seen, let it be. Believe for it. Ten times. How much legacy do you want? Ten times. Ten times. Ten times. More Lord. More Lord. places long devastated you will renew the ruined cities and the devastated for generations I'm telling you try it again some of you give up too easily try it again find somebody put a crown on their head Whatever anointing you have in your life, whatever anointing you have on your life, you just put it on the next person and you say 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, 10 times. Ten times, ten times, ten times, ten times, ten times. Well, giving away, giving away, giving away, giving away. There's something about giving away, giving away, giving away, giving away, giving away giving away just keep giving away keep giving away try it again pray over another one ten times anything good i've ever seen 
but I'm telling you, I'm giving you a secret here. So I've got to, got to wrap this up. So you can imagine the city comes down. They're scared to death. They don't. They, first of all, power forces a decision. Remember that forever. Power forces a decision. Your acts of kindness, people will applaud. They're wonderful. They're important. They're valid. But power forces a decision, a now decision. Sometimes it's for, sometimes it's again. Power invites controversy. Don't, per, don't pursue the power demonstrations of God unless you're willing to endure controversy. So here is the city, chases Jesus and the disciples out of town. And here's the brand new convert. He's running wrong with Jesus. He's going, you and me, man, those people are weird. You should, you, you should see what they did to me. These guys are weird. And Jesus does the most amazing thing. He says, you can't come. And I, I imagine the disciples going, oh, oh, if maybe we should adjust this 12 people in the party deal, this might be a good time to do it because that, that, that guy, he needs a little decide point. <laughs> Jesus says, you can't come. Go back and tell them all the great things I've done for you. Which really looks good on paper. How long has he been saved? You know, like an hour? You know, hi, I'm the naked guy. <laughs> you know, sorry about your cats and dogs. That was done in poor taste. <laughs> but the next time Jesus shows up to that part of the world, the Bible says every person from every village came to hear him because there was the credible witness of one. Jesus was illustrating something for you and for me. He said, Look up. And then look down. You'll see the fields wait for harvest. What if I don't see them wait for harvest? Look up again. <laughs> Keep getting his perspective until you see it the way he sees it. Does that mean you automatically can set the man of the gatherings free? Not necessarily. That's where you pursue earnestly spiritual gifts. People ask frequently, the secret for breakthrough, for miracles, this is my common answer. You cry out in private. You take risk in public. Let's stand. <clears throat> all right, I talked way longer than I planned to tonight, but it's all your fault. We're going to pray for folks in a moment. and. Uh, I forgot to ask when it's supposed to be done. Like, we're, we're good? Okay. Um, this, you should never do this in front of people. This is not correct. <laughs> this is not right. So, sorry about that. I want us to pray for each other. I want us to, I want us to pray. I, you, know, you know what I'd like to see out of this week? I mean, people will be healed, and, and I love that so much. I, it never gets old. It'll be Lives that will be changed will be, it'll just be wonderful. Um, but you know what I'd like to see more than anything is, is us discovering we're actually citizens of heaven now. And we actually have invitation, as it says in Revelation 4, 1, come up higher.
that when the Lord was illustrating how life should be lived, he included in the story, no one has ascended. Let me think. Don't think. Feel. It is like a finger pointing away to the moon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory. Do you understand? Except he who descended. He was modeling the normal Christian life. He was modeling, listen, this is this is real. This is this is real. It's available. This is for you. It's the typical life of the believer right now, as we get into a problem, we cry out to God, we ask him to invade. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just not what Jesus trained us for. When the disciples woke him up and asked him to calm the storm, he did. But then he turned to them and says, how come we don't have faith? The whole point was, I'm training you to do what I do. Jesus is God. The disciples go to Jesus, who is God, and they make a request. What do we call that? Prayer. Jesus answered their prayer and then said, how come you don't have faith? Most of us grew up in an environment where the answer to prayer was the evidence of faith. Where Jesus is saying, I'm looking for authority expressed through you as the evidence of faith. <laughs> Run the tape back, yeah. <laughs> we... We tend, we, most of us have grown up in an environment where the evidence of faith was the fact that we have answers to prayer. Jesus is saying, I'm looking for people that will operate in my authority as the evidence of faith. Not just the fact, and I believe in prayer, I believe in answers to prayer. Don't, don't misunderstand, but there are times where God is silent. There are times where he doesn't act. Why? Why would the Lord give you, <laughs> you ever had this happen? You get a promise from God, you wait for the answer, it doesn't happen. You get a promise a week later, the same you know, after about a dozen promises, I'm, I'm, you know, let's say it's for provision. After about 12 promises, I want to know where can I trade these in for cash? <laughs> you know, I, I, I really don't need another one. I, I'm, I'm happy with the first 10. Just, just where can I get the cash? When the Lord does that, he's generally trying to shift our awareness of our assignment. We're no longer in the posture to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We are in the position of implementing his purposes through decree, enforcing his purposes in the earth, calling for the resources that have been allotted to us to be released and loosed in Jesus' name. There's a responsibility. It's not being independent. I'm starting all over again, aren't I? <laughs> we're we're going to pray, I promise. It's not, it's not stuff we do independent from God. It's what we do because of our connection to God. It's, 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 the, it's the son. You know, I, I didn't raise my, my kids so that they would call me every time they had a decision to make. I, 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 the best I knew how, I raised them to think like me, to, to approach life like me, so that, so that they could decide their own car. To buy. They could they could buy the house they wanted to buy. They could wear the clothes they enjoy. I, I, I don't want them calling me whenever. I mean, I'm happy to jump in and help, but the, you understand the point. The, the father is trying to raise up mature sons and daughters that represent him well. And, and it's just, so here, here we go. Let's, let's go ahead and pray. Why don't you put your hand on the shoulder of somebody next to you and pray a real scary prayer.